for today's uh, for today's uh, uh, series of uh, the scientific uh, writing of WHO Afro. You are all very welcome. Uh, today we are going to be focusing on literature review, exploring literature review, and uh, methods of uh, searching the different search engines and reference managers for literature. This, you recall, is um, based on the, what we may call popular demand, uh, following the questions we got from the last, last uh, event. So uh, today we have um, two gentlemen who are going to, I said, come. sorry, two gentlemen who will be taking us on uh, this activity. I will introduce them shortly. I think some of you already have their bios in your hand. I want you to, I want to remind us that this is a virtual tra training uh, of WHO. So it adheres to the code of conduct to prevent harassment, all forms of harassment, including sexual harassment in all WHO events. The, this is a Zoom call and it has uh, two key features that I think will be very beneficial for all of us today. So it has the features for question and answer and also has the features for, for the chat. So if you have questions uh, you want to raise following the presentation that you are receiving today, you can put your questions in the question and answer, uh, use the question and answer feature. And our facilitators will be going through the question and answer features to provide responses to uh, your questions. So all questions concerning the topic and presentation should go into the question and answer feature. And you should try also try to look for the answers in that feature. But if you have issues, uh, concerning the IT, the uh, technology or the logistics of this workshop, of this uh, seminar, of this webinar, you should use the chat feature. Uh, because this is a WHO workshop, which and uh, uh, which covers the regional, uh, the region, we recognize that people are from different language groups. So we have also made provision for interpretation. So there's going to be simultaneous interpretation uh, during these uh, presentations from English to French and to post Portuguese. So for you to get the best out of it, you have the globe function, the globe icon on your screen. Please click on that globe uh, icon and select the language in which you want to hear the presentation. There will be live transcription uh, if you want to follow live transcription. So you can just click on show captions and it will show you the weddings as uh, they are going. Uh, if you want to put it off, you click again on hide caption. For the sake of documentation and also for purpose of uh, refresher in future, we are recording this uh, this uh, this series this uh, event. Uh, the materials will also be recorded. Your feedbacks are also welcome. So the sec section is recorded and we take your um, attendance at this event as a consent to be recorded, and all recordings will be shared with those that are registered on this uh, uh, program at the end of the event. Session materials, including session recording, will be emailed to participants, that's what I've said. And as we continue to improve on our training program, uh, we welcome your feedback. Uh, it will help us to improve and serve you better in the future. So at the end of this uh, event, we are going to send out a survey uh, to try to collect your feedback on um, how we fared today. So like I said, uh, today we are focusing on literature review. I have done the, uh, the uh, welcome and housekeeping for all of us. We have uh, two, uh, three facilitators as a matter of fact. Uh, one of them is Samuel Boland. Samuel is um, a colleague in uh, the uh, Emergency Prevention Preparedness and, and Response Program 
of WHO Afro based here in Brazzaville, is based in Brazzaville. Uh, the second person is Tiable Trare, who is based in Dakar, Senegal, um, is uh, in charge of uh, uh, One Health in uh, Emergency Preparedness and uh, Response Program of WHO Afro. Then, of course, we also have our colleague, uh, Pascal Muelo. Pascal Muelo is um, the chief librarian of uh, WHO in the African region. He's in charge of the library. And since we are talking about publication and we are talking about uh, literature specifically today, uh, we find him, we, we are very pleased to have him join us today. Uh, he's going to help to address some of your challenges. Uh, some of the questions you are going to raise is going to help to address them. Some of the questions have been raised in the past on how to access literature and how the library can help us. And that is why we pleaded with him to, well, we didn't plead with him because it wasn't difficult. He was very kind. We requested him to be with us and he kindly obliged us to be here today. So he's the third facilitator we have for today's event, uh, Pascal Muelo. Um, then, uh, of course, he's going to join us in the question and answer session. And then we'll have the next steps and closing remarks. Um, over to you. Uh, I invite uh, Samuel Boland to start with the presentation now. Thank you. Samuel, please. Uh, Samuel has been logged off the call. Uh, if you could um, start with uh, Tebley. What happened to Samuel? He's having some internet challenges in the office, so it has oh. taken. That is serious, yeah. He's trying to rejoin. If you can buy us, uh, maybe just give us about, about a, a minute, and then I'll share his slides. Yeah, let's give him a minute to rejoin because so that because of the sequence, so that uh, it flows. Oh, he's here. Samuel, you're welcome back. And over to you, please. Allah Santuari, uh, you're welcome. Samuel, over to you, please. Yeah. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? I'm having a very big in my sorry are you not in the office and very suddenly are, are you not in the office we can hear you getting anything i'm going to try restarting my computer i i am in the office I, i'm not sure what's going on i'm in the i'm in the shock room uh okay. i don't know what's going on um okay. I, I really would like Samuel to start first because of the sequence so that it flows well. Okay, so Let's maybe... just give him a couple of minutes. Okay. Oh no, at the last minute. <laughs> this is, uh, it was good all, all the way. Are you able to hear and see me? 
We can yes, hear perfect. You. We can hear and see you. That that fixes things. Uh, to everyone on the call, my sincerest apologies. I'm not sure what is the problem with the Wi-Fi in the shock room. Sure. Um, let me quickly. I'm I'm take it. It's uh, over to me for my presentation. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Let me pull up my presentation. Give me one second. Again, my sincerest apologies to everyone on the call. My name is uh, Dr. Samuel Boland. I'm uh, a colleague at WHO Afro and had a glitch momentarily with my internet connection. So thank you very much for your patience. And in just a second, I will be pulling up my presentation to share with you today. Is someone able to confirm they're able to see the correct screen? Yes. Yes, we can. Very, very clear. Fantastic. Again, thank you everyone for your patience. I really appreciate it. Um, please, someone jump in if I have a issue uh, again with the connection. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Samuel Boland, and today I will be speaking with you about methods for reviewing the literature. Just a short uh, little bit about myself. I work here at WHO Afro. I am a consultant in emergency preparedness, mostly focusing on viral hemorrhagic fevers. But I also have a background as an academic researcher, having published very widely in the general field of health policy and global health and a lot of the different kinds of issues and themes that many of us on this call would also like to consider writing about as well. So it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you again for your patience. And without any further ado, I will jump in. So uh, today, we're going to be talking about methods of literature review. We're going to go over a little bit uh, of an introduction and some fundamentals, talking about why, what, when, and where we use literature, because it's really important to understand these key points so that we can figure out how to conceptualize the best way to do the review of the literature. Then afterwards, we'll talk a little bit about the methods for reviewing the literature, but really what that's going to focus on is the key principles of reviewing the literature well, because there are so many different ways to approach doing a literature review that there's not necessarily a clear script for how to do that. So we're going to talk about some of those key principles for what makes a good literature review. We'll then move on to talk about how to access the literature. For many people, this is a key question when we hit paywalls and we don't know how to get access to the information that we need. We'll then go over some common challenges or mistakes, give a brief note on some key tools, and then we'll hand it over to my colleague, Dr. Tiable, to discuss uh, module two, going over the use of citation managers and reference managers and so on and so forth. So introduction and fundamentals. Why do we use literature? I know this sounds like an incredibly simple uh, basic question, but again, I think it's a really fundamental starting point for understanding and navigating the question of how one does a good literature review. So we use literature to review, assess, and discuss the existing literature. It's essential for writing a good paper because it lays the groundwork just uh, not only for our current knowledge, but also for identifying gaps. And when we identify those gaps in the existing knowledge, that is exactly the argument that we make as to why we need new research. So as you develop your article and you develop that pitch, you really need to be in a place to say, this is a gap in knowledge that this article, that this research is helping fill. So it anchors that new research in a broader context and also ensures that new findings are built on a solid foundation of existing information to avoid redundancy and also to guide research that comes after the research that you're discussing and reflecting on. So again, it shows that you've critically evaluated the material relevant to the research project at hand. It demonstrates subject knowledge and an understanding of your position in relation to other academics' works. To put it another way, 
It demonstrates that you know what you're talking about. It demonstrates that you've critically evaluated existing work. And it demonstrates that you understand how your work relates to other academic research. So then the question is, what do we mean by literature? And again, I know that this sounds like an incredibly sort of basic point, but of course, literature is many, many different things. And when we come to academic publishing, many of you will already know, but it's always important to reflect, uh, including at the point at which you conceptualize how to do your literature review, what the range of literature is that's available that reflects on the particular research topic that you're focusing on. So we usually bucket these into two different things. We usually bucket things into what we call white literature and then also gray literature. So white literature is sort of the top tier. It's the stuff that if it's available is the first material that we would go to. It usually refer refers to published works such as peer reviewed academic journal articles. That's really key. Uh, it may also include things like books or textbooks, but generally speaking, we're talking about material that has gone through peer review, that has been published, and it has been published by a credible authority. So, for example, an academic journal. So the kind of rigor that this material has gone through means that there's a higher bar for it being in the public domain. So when you yourself are developing your own literature review and writing your own academic articles, the use of white literature means that you're able to show to the reader and also to the journal to who you pitch the article that you're really focusing on trying to examine material that has passed each of these different measures and is therefore considered as credible as possible. Then we have gray literature. Now, there's nothing that's wrong with gray literature. It's sometimes called the unconventional knowledge reservoir. It's a little bit less formal, and you can break it down into a few different tiers. Some of it's better and uh, a more robust uh, source of literature for your writing. Some of it right down at the bottom we can think of things like YouTube videos or tweets or blogs. That would be the least reliable information. But depending on what you're talking about, may still be something that you consider to include as you move through the review of the literature base and trying to understand the topic at hand. So essentially, it captures this wide range. It includes things like technical reports, white papers, government documents, uh, it might include abstracts from conferences. Uh, it might also include draft papers. A lot of times, especially in health, people put out papers that have been written but have not yet been published and are not yet gone through the peer review process. Those kinds of papers would also be considered the gray literature. And as we talked about, generally speaking, as you go uh, from tier four to three to two to one, what you are doing is that you're increasing the amount of control that is there before something exists in the uh, public domain. And the more control there is, the more reliable that literature is, at least as it's understood by a journal and uh, an academic journal in particular. So generally speaking, you wanna start at the top, find what you can at the top of this pyramid and then work your way down from there. But it's really important to reiterate that even though there is a kind of prioritization in the literature, it what's most important is that you've reflected on the range of arguments related to your topic, which we're going to talk about in a couple of slides. And because of that, it's absolutely acceptable. It's no problem if you need to go into the gray literature in order to proceed with doing a comprehensive and effective review. Within our own process of developing our research projects and our papers, there are a few different places where we're going to use literature. Now, really crucially, it's going to come in when we think about understanding the research gap. We need to gain a clear understanding of the field of research that we are focusing on. We need to collect reliable resources to help support and develop that understanding. Then we need to review former research works, which helps us identify those gaps in the research. And by understanding both 
the prior topic and also those gaps, that then one, two, three leads us to our own topic. It really helps us bring us to the point where we develop a topic. Then we got to get organized. So once we've developed the topic, which is based on understanding the research gap, we need to confirm aims and objectives, develop our methodology for our research project. We need to understand the ethical criteria involved in the research process. For example, if you're collecting surveys or doing any kind of intervention that you're researching, there's going to be ethical considerations. And then finally, we move to the collection of data. And then once we've done the uh, project proposal, we've developed all of those different criteria, we move on to structuring and writing of the findings once we've collected that data. The sort of general uh, scope of what would be included in an article, we all know, going from introduction, background, methods, findings, and analysis, discussion, and conclusion. And then we're going to take all of those things, we're going to put them together to generate a draft. And then finally, we're going to review and proofread. And at pretty much all of the yellow stages that you can see on the screen in front of you, you're going to be drawing on the literature review that you do in order to make sure that you're doing that step correctly. You'll note that in the actual writing of a paper, and this is really key, that generally speaking, you are not including that literature in the findings, but it's going to be a key component of your introduction, of course, of your background in literature review. It may well be part of your methods if you're drawing on methodologies that other people have used in research to do your own. And then most importantly, perhaps, you're going to be reflecting on that literature in your discussion, considering your findings, and saying, here is how and why I have advanced that literature base. So for so many reasons, you can see that figuring out how to do a good review of that literature about your topic is really, really fundamental to so much of moving through your research project and developing a good paper that can go out for peer review and publication. So now we're going to come to some of the methods for reviewing the literature. There are many, many different ways that one can go through and think to do this. And I think that, as I referenced at the beginning of this uh, particular session, we're not going to necessarily jump into the nitty gritty step by step detail for how to proceed with doing one of those different kinds of reviews. There's very, very good uh, aids online. The most important thing is selecting the correct kind of review, and then you could either speak with your research mentors one-on-one, -on -one, or you can go to YouTube or to Google and find resources about how to proceed with doing the particular kind of review that you would like to do for your particular paper. So to give you a sense of what those different kinds of uh, review methodologies are, and for those that were here last session, you'll remember this slide from before. We have, of course, first and foremost, the systematic literature review. Now, this is the most intensive form of literature review. It's very rigorous. It's very systematic. It has a clear methodology for selecting studies and also for evaluating studies. And the goal of a systematic literature review is to have an exhaustive summary of current literature uh, and to uh, an exhaustive summary of current literature that's relevant to your research topic. Some people may have heard of meta-analysis. This is a different kind of literature review. These are often a part of a systematic review. And what they do is they statistically combine results from multiple studies to identify patterns, sources of disagreement, or other interesting relationships that may come to light in the context of multiple studies. Then we move on to scoping review, and these aren't in any particular order or preference. We're going to get onto that. This is just giving you a sense of the range of different reviews available to you as a method of how you do the literature review. A scoping review is in some ways similar to a systematic review, but it's broader in scope. It really intends to map some of the key concepts underpinning a research area and the main sources and types of evidence that are available. So they're really useful in identifying the extent of the research related to a topic and then also gaps in the literature. Moving on, we have a narrative or traditional literature review. 
which is a broad overview of existing literature in a specific field or topic. It's usually less structured than a systematic review and doesn't usually involve a systematic search strategy or quality assessment of the included studies. That doesn't again mean that it's any worse, it's just different. Moving through them, there are eight of these, so bear with me. We have a critical review that goes beyond summarizing and synthesizing the existing literature. Uh, they usually offer, an, uh, offer a critical evaluation of the literature, which may help you identify inconsistencies, gaps, or methodological shortcomings. Then we have an integrative review, which synthesizes on a topic in a systematic manner, a rapid review, as the name suggests, it's usually a swift evidence synthesis, which might sacrifice some of the depth and breadth of a systematic review for the sake of timeliness, which is really key, especially if you're doing research about an ongoing, urgent matter. And then we have also what's called a state of the art review, which provides a comprehensive and up to date overview of a specific area of research, highlighting the most recent developments uh, and innovations in the field. So none of these reviews are necessarily the best method. What is the best method is going to depend completely on the subject of your research and the kind of project that you would like to do. Many of us understandably think of systematic literature reviews as the sort of gold standard of literature review. That may be true, but they also take a super long time. And generally speaking, for many, many topics of uh, the research we want to do, they would not be required for what we're looking to do. Instead, probably based on a glancing at some of the different topics that I have seen people interested in conducting research about, you might think to look at scoping reviews, a traditional literature review, or even a rapid review. Again, especially if you're looking to get something out there very quickly about an urgent uh, emergency issue. To put all of this kind of in another way, um, you can see in front of you this slide, which shows you that there is this kind of range of different reviews. And the more you move towards a systematic review, the more confidence you have that what you have found is comprehensive and truly reflects the availability of literature that has been previously published on your topic. But just to really bring home this point, when you look at a systematic review and you compare it to some others, there are some great things about it, but there are also some pretty significant drawbacks. So systematic reviews, they're focused research questions, they have narrow parameters, so you're really looking at a very specific thing. At the beginning of the review, you're coming up with a method that says, this is what I'm going to include in my review, this is what I'm going to exclude. You have a very detailed process of extracting that data, and you often also do a quantitative synthesis on what you've, uh, what you've established. These can take just by themselves a whole year. There are whole teams of people that are involved and their whole job is just doing systematic reviews and absolutely it's hugely important. Um, but if we're independent researchers or just a couple of people, it's probably going to be too much time for us to be able to reasonably move forward with actually trying to develop, advance and complete a research project unless we're looking at something that might take multiple years. Compared to a scoping review, for example, research questions are often broader. You can develop your inclusion and exclusion, uh, what's called post hoc, which means you collect the literature that you need, and then you can kind of look back at the literature you've collected and said, well, this is how you can sort of explain why this is the literature that I have. Quality is less of a priority than using a systematic review. You may or may not involve data extraction. And the synthesis of that uh, review, as you reflect in your paper, in your research on the literature that you've received, is usually more qualitative. You're not saying, statistically speaking, X, Y, and Z. You're saying, author so-and-so generally finds this 
compared against author so-and-so who generally found something else. And you're reflecting qualitatively on the status of the research, uh, the research base that's available. So these are much faster. They might be as little as one month. They could take maybe perhaps three. But nevertheless, for many of the different issues we're focusing on, especially policy issues, um, these maybe are going to be a, a better target. What we're really focusing on, again, is less to push you to one or another, but to help you really reflect on the research you're looking to do as a means of ensuring that you're focusing on the principles of doing a good literature review rather than necessarily the exact steps of uh, how to move through any one of those different eight that I reflected on. So you're really focusing on range. You need to understand the range of different arguments and the range of literature related to your topic. You need to make sure that as you present the literature that you found, that you're doing so in a way which is balanced and neutral. And you need to make sure that you critically evaluate the literature. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what does it mean to critically evaluate the literature? Because that can sound a little vague. Um, but it really is the most important thing about making sure that you proceed to do a literature review effectively. So these questions in front of you are really, really good questions to ask yourself. And if you know and are asking all of these different questions, then I would say that you're doing a pretty good job at critically evaluating the literature. And you can see there's a whole range of different questions here. You're looking at when the work was written, and is that relevant? It probably is for a lot of health sciences. Who wrote it, and whether that's relevant, what their sources are, if their conclusion is justified and supported by the evidence, maybe there are some flaws that you've identified in other people's literature. Maybe you've also found some things that are particularly useful or particularly valuable that you want to reflect on as well. You could think about whether the author supports a certain theory, method, or school of thought. And then also really fundamental is how that piece of literature fits in with other literature. Does it support what others have said, or does it argue against others? And again, the whole time, think about range, balance and neutrality, and critical evaluation. That's your job as you move through doing an effective review. So as for you as a researcher, what that's going to mean is that you're going to start almost certainly with doing a preliminary search. You know you're interested in something. You know you have a topic that you're focused on. You know that you have a particular problem that you would like to know how to solve. So you're going to do a preliminary search. You're going to kind of just Google around, go to Google Scholar maybe, look at some abstracts, and get a sense of what the issue is and what the range of literature is that's available. And as you do that, you're going to begin defining your problem. And the more and more you define your problem, the more thorough your searching is going to be and the more thorough your reading is going to be. You're going to begin to develop a particular expertise, not just on your subject, but by definition, also on the available information that is there related to your subject. So essentially, you end up in this cycle. As you learn more, you narrow the definition of your problem, you get better at knowing what is relevant, what you need to know, but you also get better at knowing what's not relevant, what literature there is to ignore. And as you define your problem, get better at knowing what to include and better at what knowing not uh, to include, your search and your reading becomes more and more targeted. So you just continue this process and you get targeted and targeted and targeted. And eventually you're going to be really an expert very quickly in understanding the literature that exists around the topic of your research. The whole time as you move through this process, you're going to want to keep a record of what you search. We're going to come back to this with the citation and reference managers in the second module. You should keep a list of questions that you develop as you read, again, remembering to include those questions from the prior slide, and also really key, read as you go. And the reason that that's important, rather than just finding the 
subject line of an article, saving it and moving on, is that that reading is really key to this process that you see on the slide. So you need to read as you go so that you get better at narrowing your problem, knowing what to include and what to ignore, because you need that search to become more and more targeted as you move through this process. So as we talked about, you're going to be collecting your sources. You're going to be taking careful notes. And then you're going to be identifying common themes. So not only are you getting a targeted search, but you're also going to be building out what are the different themes that people are bringing up related to my topic. Now, here's where you start to suddenly get to a point where you're really, really tangibly moving forward in the development of your particular project. As you organize those themes that you've identified as you review the literature, you're going to be focused on these key questions. What do we already know? What are the key concepts or variables related to this particular issue? What are the existing theories? What are the inconsistencies or shortcomings in our knowledge? What evidence is inconclusive, contradictory, or too limited? Why is it important to further study the research problem that we've chosen? And what contribution could your research be expected to make based on the answers to all of these other questions. And the magical thing as you organize these common themes, as you put them all together, is that that is basically your introduction and background of your paper in exactly that order. You can shift it around a little bit. It doesn't need to be exactly the same. But what I'm hoping you're taking from this is you can imagine that as you take your careful notes, as you review the literature, and as you do so, you come up with these themes and you organize those themes. What do we know? What are the concepts, et cetera, et cetera? You will find that simply writing and describing the range of literature that addresses each of these different questions that you can see there, and you put them in order, you put some words around it, that basically is the introduction in the background section of your paper, of your manuscript as you develop it. So what are some elements of a good literature review. Now, we've talked about some of them already. And again, I'm really focusing on these key points, these key elements, which I think are fundamental to doing this well, rather than saying exactly, here's a step-by-step -step process. Because what I would encourage you to do is think about your topic, reach out to your mentors, reach out to other academics and say, what kind of review is best for me? But these elements are true no matter what. You need to place each work in the context of its contribution to the understanding of the subject under review. By each work, I mean the different pieces of literature that you are drawing into your paper, not necessarily your own. It's about saying a particular scholar, a particular author, or a particular piece of data means this in relation to understanding the subject that we're looking at a good review of the literature would then describe the relationship of each work to the others under consideration. It may be that some people agree or disagree. It may be that some people have had findings that particularly nuance or move the knowledge, our knowledge collectively of a particular issue in a particular direction. You really need to think hard about how these works are speaking to each other, even if they're not citing each other. What does one mean to the other? A good review of the literature identifies new ways to interpret the base of the literature and to shed light on any gaps that were identified in previous research. I would argue that a good review also resolves conflicts among seemingly contradictory previous studies. So for example, a study might say they might have this finding over here and another study might have this finding over here. Now, you're going to want to dive in if you found that they have disagreements. Dive into the articles, dive into the methods, dive into the contexts in which they're looking, and try to understand, are those differences because of a failure in research? Did the researchers do something wrong? Or maybe they're looking at a different context. Maybe they looked at a different period of time. 
Maybe there are other factors that explain these different findings. And it's your job as someone reviewing the literature to say, a particular person found this and a particular person found something different. And this is why. That's a really key contribution to what you're doing in your literature review. You're going to want to identify areas of prior scholarship that helps you prevent duplication of efforts. So again, that ties into identification of gaps. You're also going to want to use your review to point the way forward for further research. And then as we've talked about a few times, you're going to use the literature to place your work in the context of existing literature. So all of these different points here are elements of a good review of the literature. And in a couple of slides, we're going to go over the kind of flip side of this, which are some of the different mistakes that some people sometimes make. First, though, I want to just give a few moments to talking about how we access the literature, because as we referenced at the beginning in the introduction, it's very normal and very common that you'll be looking for a particular piece of writing and you're not able to easily access it. And that can be incredibly frustrating and it can feel really antithetical to the whole notion of why we do research in the first place, which is to inform the public. So what happens is, as I'm sure all of us have dealt with multiple times, this is an example, is a real example. I, I pulled up as I was developing this module. I pulled up an article that's called How to Write a Literature Review. And you click on full article, which you can see on the bottom left, and suddenly you're shown this screen. It's asking you for $53 to get 48 hours of access to the PDF or to access through your institution, which is not always available, pardon me. So what do we do? It's really frustrating. All of us have dealt with this. Any researcher uh, out there has struggled with this issue of trying to figure out how you're gonna access material that is what's behind what we call the paywall, the wall that blocks us unless we pay. We have at WHO, a really, really wonderful ability to access an enormous amount of literature free of charge. For those who already do know about this, I am confident that you must be using it all the time because it's basically your best friend as you're doing a literature review and doing research. But for those that don't know about it, I would be remiss to not quickly reference what is available to us. It's a wonderful, wonderful resource to anyone else in so much of the world. They are so jealous of the fact that we have this. So first off, we have what's called Hinari, sometimes also called Research for Life. It is the world's largest collection of online biomedical and health literature, which provides free access to more than 200,000 online information resources related to health. Now, within the Afro region, and I'll talk in a minute about how we do this, this is available if you are a World Health Organization employee in any of the country offices or at the regional office here in Brazzaville as well. In addition to Hinari, we have the Global Information Full Text or GIFT that provides WH staff worldwide online access to subscribed journals and databases in the medical and biomedical fields, facilitating access to the latest and most valued scientific information. These are two incredible resources. So obviously the question is, how do we actually access them? You just go on the internet. It's relatively straightforward. Our librarians who are uh, here on the call who may be able to answer a couple of questions have set up a really useful tool you go to the internet, you type in Hinari or GIFT, and it'll pop up with this page. And on this page, you'll see there's an all you need to know WHO staff guide on how you both access these resources and also how you use them, which is fundamental to being able to advance our literature reviews. So once you go on the internet and you'll see this web page, you can pull it up, you can get more information, you can go through the guide, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing to note is that 
at Afro here in Brazzaville for people listening in. You actually don't need login information or any kind of code. As long as you're on the Wi-Fi within the building, you are able to access both Hinari and Gift. If you're at a hub or a country office, uh, you may need login information or a code. Now, these are freely available. So if you do have in your country office or at your hub, an in-country uh, library and librarian, the first step is to contact that librarian. If you don't have an in-country library or librarian, then you can contact the Afro library and the web address is down here on the bottom right of the screen and they can help guide you towards making sure that you have access to these particular resources. It is really key that uh, please you don't share these codes or login information if you do require them and you do access them. But nevertheless, if you have any questions, if you're not able to figure out how to proceed with accessing these materials, contact your librarian or contact the Afro library and they'll be able to help. So on that note, probably the single best piece of advice that I can give you in this entire webinar is that librarians are your absolute best friends as you develop your scientific writing and to, you do your literature reviews. Because not only are they able to help you find the literature that you're looking for, Librari it's librarians' jobs to help you figure out how to search effectively. So you want to have a question about what's the best method for reviewing literature related to what you do. I would highly encourage you to have that conversation with the library and to talk to them as experts about what's out there to say, can you help me understand what literature is out there? Can you help me understand how to find it? Could you help me develop my search terms for using Hanari or using GIFT? and figuring out how to deal with any of the particular issues that I face, I cannot encourage you enough to engage the resources that are available to you through the library. And if you don't have one in your country, through the library here at the regional office. A quick point, really handy to use Google Scholar. It's really helpful for quickly searching, especially when you're looking at abstracts because you don't need to use GIFT or Hanari when you're reviewing abstracts. And then I would also encourage you to uh, download in your web browser what's called EndNote Click. This is not the EndNote that we're going to discuss as a citation manager. This is a tool. It's just an extension for Chrome or Firefox or whatever web browser you use. And all it means is that when you're searching the literature review, when you're searching the literature, if that literature is available, open access and open source, the tool will identify that. And instead of having to log in or go down this big rabbit hole of how you find that literature, it'll just pop up with this button that says view PDF. You click on it and there it is. If it's behind a paywall, it's not going to help you access that material. That's why you need GIFT and Hanari. But if you are able to get it open source, this tool will just help speed up that process. I'm going to very quickly move through now some common challenges or mistakes. And then that will take no more than just a couple of minutes. And then thereafter, we're going to be moving on to citation reference managers. So common challenges or mistakes. This is essentially the flip side of what we look for in a good literature review. An inadequate search. It's really important that your search is comprehensive. Another big problem we face is bias in selection. People often want to cherry pick sources. We kind of know where our research is going. We may have a good sense of what the data we have is. So sometimes it's really tempting to just pick the literature that helps lead us to that particular argument. This goes completely against the idea and the fundamentals of a good literature review. You need to be neutral, neutral, neutral at all times. Uh, an over-reliance on secondary sources can be an issue, though that does depend a little bit on whether or not primary sources are readily available for your topic. They're often not, especially in Africa, especially related to understudied issues, which many of us are focusing on. 
Again, that critical evaluation, all of those questions that we reflected on before, you need to be asking all of them and making sure that you're not just accepting prior published research as golden. You need to think about its positives, its negatives, its drawbacks, its flaws, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, you need to not uh, neglect conflicting evidence in the literature. You need to make sure that you're reflecting both sides of the argument, because I promise you that both sides of the argument are out there. Finally, and I'll move through these all at the same time, it's important to include cited literature, or it would be a mistake, I apologize, to include cited literature in the results section of the paper. The results should really only be your data. You should not be reflecting on other people's publications and the results of the paper that you write. It would be a mistake to select a review methodology that's unnecessarily intensive and therefore time consuming, or therefore resulting in that we review, uh, conduct the review incompletely or inadequately. It would be a mistake to submit papers with the wrong citation style. And finally, it would be a mistake to forget to define your search methods in your paper. So as you're talking about methods in the method section of your paper, you're going to want to have at least a few sentences about how you found the literature that you used and the different methods that you used in order to select the literature that you reflected on throughout the course of your paper. So as a segue, and again, thank you for your patience. The next huge question, as you go to Google Scholar, you put in your particular topic and you see that there are a thousand papers Especially. that might be relevant mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. I'm hearing a uh, noise for a uh, sound from an interpreter, uh, just FYI. Um, I think a mic is off um, is that we highly encourage you to use a reference manager to organize all of that searching that you're going to do. And so what's really key is that you think about that organization as we talked about, and there's a whole range of these different reference managers available to you. And it is my pleasure to now turn over to Dr. Tieble, who's going to help reflect on how to use these citation managers as a way to advance your efficiency, your reliability, and how systematic you are as you engage with the literature base. So thank you very much for your time. Again, my apologies for the slight technical difficulties at the beginning of the call. Really appreciate it. I'll be available for Q&A. Uh, after Dr. Tieble um, gives his presentation. And without further ado, Dr. Tieble, over to you. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, thanks for a very exciting uh, presentation and well-delivered, uh, comprehensive too. So um, uh, before as we move on to Tieble, uh, Sam, please, we have some questions in the uh, Q&A uh, boss. You can just look at them and see which ones you can respond to. Uh, just to save us time. Uh, Teble, over to you now, please. Thank okay, you. You can see the hands going up for you. Thank yeah, you, Sam. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Joseph and Dr. Sambolon. Really great presentation. I can see uh, the appreciation colleagues have uh, for this presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, I share. Okay, can you see my slide now, please? Please. Uh, please go on slide mode. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, give me two seconds, please. Okay, how is it now? Is it okay? Great. Okay, we kick off. Okay, thank you very much, colleague. And we will just continue where uh, Dr. Sambolan left. Okay. Yes, for to manage effectively your information, it is very important to keep all the data in particular to for the relevant paper you want to include uh, in into your articles, books, thesis, or assignment. And there is a reason for it. Because if you cite references where you got your information, uh, it will allow you to avoid the allegation of plagiarism. And plagiarism can cost your 
career, entire career. It doesn't matter. You can have your PhD. You can be even a director. But if there is a problem, they can go back and check it and you will be left out. That's where you will understand how serious it is. But how do you do? How do you avoid it? You need to cite properly. To cite, you need to have information. And to have information is not enough. You need to be able to manage effectively this information because you may need it. And as you go along, the memory, your memory can fade. So for example, you can find an interesting paper. You can cite it in your article. Two, three months down the road, you have to review that paper again. You don't know where that information is. It can be a serious problem. If you are well organized, that's fine. And But to be able to have uh, this information compiled, if you go to the, your local library, for example, you will see the way the archive uh, the, the archive document, the way it is, it is easy to find whatever you, you look for. That's in a hard copy. And electronic copies are the same. So fortunately, uh, reference managers are uh, available, uh, software, application for you to use. Some are free, some are not free, but you get best services uh, in all kind of reference manager. And the database uh, Dr. Sam Bolan just shown you, and if, if you look carefully, they all will link to citation manager, one way or another way. Even web page, sometimes Google, for example, you can add them in, in the setting. We will show you in a few minutes. Okay. So here is the way usually people organize some printed hard copy, some bookmark, and you can see if you do your search, for example, for systematic literature review or scoping, you need to compile them. And the engine you use will provide you opportunity as well to, uh, to organize your file or to send to yourself by email, that's possible, to have hard copies uh, in PDF format and so one way to effectively manage all this is here. You need to keep all your references and bibliographic record. That's very important. And we will talk about the difference between bibliographic record and references when you cite them. Uh, printing is good, but with ecological issue, uh, people try to save the environment. And uh, uh, myself, I print a lot, but uh, I have to reduce it and uh, just to use the electronic copies. So now you can have a PDF into your computer if you have it like uh, on the, your desktop, your document, cloud, it doesn't matter. But sometimes it can be disorganized. By reference manager will give you the opportunity. I will go quickly through this because you will have this slide. Then we will go. Uh, we will do the demonstration. But the reference manager, they are core functions, and some have other features. And for example, you can store the citation in your personal library. You can organize them even twenty years down the road. You can add a note, annotation, or tag labels. So when you come to rewrite a paper or what did I do 20 years ago when I was writing this paper with the new information, it will be easy for you to, to go in. So you can create a reference list as well, rather than doing manually, they will give you opportunity, automatically it will come. So, and the accuracy is 100% in some of them, but some, a reference you have to edit a little bit. And then we will show you as well why this happened. Okay. On your right here, you will find some of the extension, a function where you can use, for example, you can look at the abstract. If you don't want to read all the articles and you can read the abstract and the introduction part, 
the result. And if you are interested, then you can move on. But abstract alone, sometimes you know it doesn't give everything. And depending who write that, who wrote that abstract, maybe if you read entire the entire paper, then you have to rewrite this abstract. Probably you will do it differently. That's the difference about uh, between scholar and those who try to imitate them because they will really understand it and they can rewrite it, interpret in their own way. So you can sometimes retrieve directly citation or references into the reference manager, or you, you do it from the database, then you pull out into the reference manager to save it, to organize it, or you can even pull the PDF in folded format. You just bring them into the reference. We will show you in a minute. Okay, just if you have, you search, for example, you can type this one uh, in your Google or in your uh, Mozilla uh, internet browser. The title of this paper is a whole of United Nations approach to tackle antimicrobial resistance. This paper, uh, it is a, a mapping of the mandate and activities of or all international organizations. Type it uh, so you can follow with me, then you can see exactly what you get. So if you get the BMJ journal, uh, Global Health will come. If you have time, please do it. It, it just takes you one second. And you will see the journal as well. And most importantly, this is very important for you, site. You read the title, you're happy with it, you can even read quickly the abstract and you have access to the PDF here. So I'm interested in citing this article when I, uh, I want to uh, write my paper. So you will have this. If you click cite, you will have download. This, the first one, download this, offer you to download to your library in a few formats. It could be EndNote format, it could be even risk format or ref work. Then you can bring it into Mendeley or it could be Mendeley format. This happened and uh, it changed. These are another format. That's where the reference type, for example, National Library of Medicine. And, but you can have APA here. You can have APA, uh, Harvard here. You can have Vancouver. You, you, you have over 100 style you can have. So you can see how this is written. The journal is here, the volume issue, and this direct object index, which will, that's the unique number, and the PubMed, PubMed ID identification number is this as well. And you can see it is different from PubMed Central. But all these IDs will allow you to identify that, paper, that particular paper. And it is unique to this. You will not have a duplicate of this. OK, that's just to give you an overview of citing how important it is. And depending on the journal you would like to publish and the, or the organization you work for. And you can copy here in the text format. OK, let's, let's look at this site how important it is to comply to the rule, the rule and the regulation of the journal you're gonna publish. This is the same citation, the same article, impact of COVID-19 epidemic, whether you call it a pandemic or epidemic, they, they wrote here, epidemic, on coronary care. If you look at, all this, the name is really exact, but there are differences when you come to the bottom here. It is in American Journal, and they put in bracket the year, and you can see the volume, and here, and they put the paper. That's the Harvard style. And Harvard style, you can look at how they have done exactly, and you can see that difference from here. Uh, but the article is the same but they are different, different. So you need to comply into this. Because if you don't, then reviewer 
really reject, that means you didn't pay attention to the data you've been asked. So fortunately, there are some application uh, software. Mendeley is here. Some of you have downloaded it, and you can download it if you have a permission to, to use it on your desktop. But for uh, people like me, I don't want to have it on my desktop. I, I'll, I'll take the web format, the web base. And you, you can use it on any computer. You just log it in. And, but this, uh, this application will allow you to store your references, to search, to insert them while you are writing your paper. And I know some artificial intelligence package do, do have that menu site. So you will say, why I need this? It's always good to have one of these database to be well organized. And you can download this on whether it is a Mac computer or Windows or the, any application, even on iPhone. For people who use Linux, Linux and they can Red Hat, they can use this version. So the link here is here. I think Amarachi gave you this already. So it is, a, you can have the desktop as what I say, you can synchronize, but these features are very important. Synchronization, web, Important citation plugin. So uh, the, you have the interface, you will have this on your Mendeley. If you look carefully, you will have this presentation and you can, uh, we will show you uh, the, how you can access this menu. Now, how do you manage your reference effectively, efficiently? And so it, this is important and for several reasons again, uh, we mentioned some of them. And But while you are citing, it's good to know exactly where this reference is and you insert to save time. For example, you have a paper one, paper two, you can name those paper appropriately and compile your reference list so you will not run into problem. Because if you have to search them in a, it's disorganized, you just waste time, you get frustrated. Sometimes you've been asked, can you send me that paper you read or uh, exactly what you caught? And it really it can be frustrating sometimes. You can spend hours if you are not organized. Okay, let's move quickly. This is the interface you will see when you open your Mendeley. But because there were already some references here, you will not be able to see this, but what you will see, you will see the blank one. So we will try to import some article into this, or book section, or entire book. You will see how it works, and it, it can make your life very easy. And so you can add file. We know that you folder, synchronize, search, discovery. All these are features you will have on your uh, Mendeley. You can have it on Zotero. You can have it on uh, uh, EndNote as well. So one of the uh, advantages uh, you have on Mendeley is you can open article. When you have the article inside, you can open it and you can add a note to it. You can group it, annotation, you can do, you can even add tags. So you search for those tags or the information annotation, like uh, Dr. Boland was saying, you, you add a note to it. And this this part is very interesting. Uh, uh, I, I, I will uh, insert that one into my uh, article. You can write those very easily. Then you just compile them and uh, make your life easy. And so, uh, for example, you can see how Paul. This is uh, well, that's a, a kind of uh, picked up from Mendeley itself. This is useful. He added like this note. But you can be more specific about this, so it, it make uh, it will help you. Personal library. The only purpose, the purposes are you can be well organized. And note is now it is on twenty one. I have twenty. Uh, twenty one is available for those who want to get it. And Mendeley, you have this version two point one uh, one oh nine. So this is 2024, you can see the latest version. That means 
uh, the, the technician and colleague or those who are really involved in improving this database based on your the user feedback because the user will ask we need the application to be able to do this that's why a uh, Mendeley was developed because the phd student who were working uh, they struggle with other reference manager they just decided uh, listen we need to develop our own and they came up with this and now they compete with others but for the good purpose for improvement citation reference list you know that systematic review you can organize you can organize using uh reference manager that's the beauty of it you can synchronize even in the cloud now you can lose your computer i'm not saying you need to go and uh, deliberately do that but uh, if in the case then you can still have access to your library you can still working you you, you can still uh, 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 contributing to paper or be uh, kind of uh, anyway you will have a facility more than if you have it on your desktop only okay because your computer if you run into trouble it will be very difficult then one advantage you can share your library with your colleague you can share group of library or references with your colleague uh, they can work on it as well okay so uh, that was Mendeley. Let's see how the interface of uh, EndNote looks like. EndNote, they improve a lot. What will you, you will see in the new version, for example, 20 and 21, it will look like this. And you have the file, edit, references, tool, window, help. So then you will have your library, uh, your references here with the journal type if it is book you you just select that one you add a note if you want we will show you quickly how you can use this effectively you can even add manually you can do that in a uh, in Mendeley as well we will go through this very quickly okay let's move on for example he, uh, i took uh, one of the articles uh, article published by dr Murray Cater in uh, colleague, Dr. Keita and colleague. That's the appropriate use. Uh, so you come to tool, for example, you will see the output style. Output style, I choose Lancet. And but you could choose uh, Harvard, Vancouver. You, you have almost a hundred here. And one of the important things is you can even download some of uh, the template for journal as well. And uh, you can use them directly. So, uh, or you, you go to the uh, journal website. So it, it, it will help you really to, to work uh, on your manuscript and uh, to send it to, to colleague. And you can change the coding of the reference as well. We will show you. But that's just an overview of uh, the end of and you can see how I group some of these. My group, for example, of framework, and you will see guideline, health system, infectious disease. All these are, I organize uh, like this. So if I have to contribute into article related to one health evaluation, I just click here because I accept those one in a uh, few article or uh, these are the one I want to use. Yeah, you, but they will remain here in the main, okay? So here is site while you're writing, for example, in Microsoft, you open the Microsoft, you start writing, then you insert your, your citation. To insert citation, when you click on a reference, it will take you to EndNote, for example, here, and you will cite. You will click on this, uh, 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 this first one, insert to citation, you can do that. And you can edit your citation. You manage, you edit, you update as well, and you can convert it to text uh, format and send it to colleagues who don't have a note if you want. Then you can see all uh, the menu. But we will quickly take you through this. And uh, that's it. the old fashioned, but it all works. You will see it in practically. Okay, for general, if you don't have the Mendeley for the practical uh, part of this, you can always go and download it 
uh, or login, but you need to have your username, last name, email, because that's important for them, not to track you, but for you to be able to use. There is some agreement you need to have because you need to clarify that purpose to them. And you can see how uh, even the BBC comment on it, different people comment on it. Uh, it will avoid you to have a pile of documents like this in your house, like I may have it. And I will not show you, but uh, I do. And uh, so you, it, it, it stop you uh, avoiding this. And uh, so please take opportunity to use one of these to facilitate, to make it easy your life. And uh, I think that will be good. And Zotero is one of them as well. You can even connect uh, to the Chrome. Uh, you have a Zotero connector and you can download it uh, on different platform. But all these application or database or software, you can name them. You have YouTube training all over the place. So if you are interested in any of these application, the best thing is you don't have to spend the entire day on it. You, you like something, you open the YouTube, you look at it. If you start, then you can uh, start asking colleagues who use them. And uh, But uh, generally, they are all similar. If you can see this, for example, you will see uh, some, the cost is associated, but some not. For example, I like EndNote. And uh, you can see here, uh, EndNote, uh, I, the WHO got the license. I saw it and uh, because I tried to use WHO one and uh, I managed to do that. But uh, if you need it, really, you need to approach your IT colleague or library and they will facilitate that one. And uh, it, it can be downloaded on Mac, computer, Windows. And so you have, uh, it doesn't allow you to uh, do selective synchronization, but maybe that was, uh, because when you look at this, it is June, uh, Jan January fourth. I access the we access the website, so uh, things can change day after day. But uh, I don't think that's very important uh, because I like to synchronize everything, and so and uh, these uh, these are the feature uh, you have and you may not have. Advantage of Mendeley are here as well over. And not and Zotero. You can compare this one. Uh, they are all good. As long as you master it, and more you practice, more you become uh, you, you become familiar uh, in it as well. It doesn't matter. Your colleague can use Mendeley. You can use Endnote. These are interchangeable. This platform. Uh, at the end of the day, if you don't agree on it, you do it in text format. Then you share the, your draft. Okay. Uh, so now. It is important to organize your reference. And uh, this is kind of, uh, you look at this, we will do this uh, in a minute and uh, in, in practical. So you can see how you can even extract data from PDF, okay? And site while you write, that's a, a great feature. All of them have it and you can do it and uh, you can even uh, edit some citation, but you need to respect the rule of the uh, uh, the rule set for the application itself, the software, because some don't allow you to do it directly, but you have to manipulate a little bit and uh, right click and edit, and then it will allow you, because sometimes you need to write, uh, for example, Bolan say this, and then you, you put your in the bracket and you move on. And uh, that's the kind of, you want to paraphrase or you want to summarize what he express in uh, in uh, the original paper, but uh, or secondary paper. Okay. Now, let's, oh. Okay. This is your take home. Um, message. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, stop okay. Here. No, 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 don't stop. Don't, no, don't stop, please. Okay. I just want to say, if you are going to do the demonstration, yeah, we should bit, we should be a bit slower so that people can uh, can catch up. Don't stop. Okay, 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 Thank okay. You. Yeah. So this is the summary now. Reference management software 
all of them are very powerful. They provide you with opportunity to compile, to store, and to make even a note on the literature you found for your research or for your work, for your thesis. And it's very important uh, because the thesis, when you come to it, that's something really sometimes you don't have the time. If you are not well organized, you just will waste time and it creates fr frustration. And you can create your own library. You organize it and you have the PDF and you can cite them uh, if you need to write something. Uh, so uh, some paper or some section of the book, it saves you time. It saves you time. That's very important because whenever you, you're going to ask, where did you get this? You can pull out very easily. And uh, so uh, this, uh, then the basic, uh, I'm not saying they're all good. You need an internet connection. You need electricity, of course. These are <laughs> these, uh, things you will face. And uh, we have seen uh, uh, how that connection works uh, sometimes. And uh, you can always look for a innovative approach and uh, pe uh, colleague, uh, people work on it and they develop, they want to improve it. And with the uh, artificial intelligence, it becomes really even uh, better now because they give you opportunity to, uh, to cite. Okay, I will uh, say, uh, we will move to the demonstration now. We will go slowly, slowly. And if you have Mendeley or you have uh, and it doesn't matter, we will do Mendeley now, then we will move to EndNote quickly. So you can see, you can have just feeling of it. Uh, I know you know we to, uh, to have everything today, but uh, at least you will, uh, you will be able to, uh, to start organizing it and enjoy the technology. And next time you, you will, you will uh, just reference your yeah, your your article site reference appropriately and correctly. But again, they are not perfect yet. I will show you why they are not perfect. Okay, can I share now? Can can we start with EndNote? If you guys want, or uh uh Mendeley, Professor Joseph, over to you. I think you should start with Mendeley, which is uh freer. Okay. In terms yeah. of costs, so that uh cost of time. Okay. That's good. So, Mendeley, can you see my uh, screen now? Hello? Yes, we can. We can see okay. your screen. Now, people, colleagues who have downloaded Mendeley, suppose you want, you open it, and if you don't have any article yet, don't worry about it. We will show you how to get an article on this quickly. Okay, you open it. Once you open, okay, you save, uh, you go here. You add new. It could be new file from your computer. It could be new folder from your computer. Or you could enter data manually. Or you can even import library. Now, say, for example, I want to import a file from my computer. How do you do it? You click here, file from my computer. Now it takes me to the download folder directly, but I don't need that one because uh, let's say I wanted this paper by Keita and colleague. What do I do? I just say open, open this paper and you can see in one click, it was added. You can see, yeah? It's added. And so you will have that paper. Now, because I already added that paper, it tell me directly you have duplicate. And you need to avoid having duplicate in your library in, when you cite, because if you cite twice, the same paper, and uh, in a case, you, you will have a conflicting information. So to avoid that one, you review this. You say, okay, where, where this duplicate is. You can see them here, okay? 
see one two one two i had a, a, a another duplicate you look carefully it tell you when it was added and it is the same journal so what do you need to do you have action here keep this reference only or move this reference to trash so you will have one because the reason for that is in case you add a note to this you can see this you add a note to it and what you don't want and you come here your annotation or notebook annotation here or information general then you delete this one with with duplicate or you get confused it can be a problem sometimes you get frustrated you will say no the application is not good no i did something which were not really which was not appropriate you get frustrated you remove that frustration by working with the application not fighting the with the application just stay and just remove one for example i don't want this i just say move to trash and here the same Oh no, not interested. Move reference to trash. So you have you don't have that duplicate anymore. Okay, that's one. And the other one, if you want, I I can do this. You minimize this. You pull out that paper from your desktop, and you you leave it in in Mendeley. I will try to minimize this this window. You can see how I minimize this window. The window is minimized. And now I minimize this window. I'm going to look for that paper. Oh, okay. The paper is here. I just move this paper here. Okay, pay attention to this, please. I put here. It goes in. It doesn't matter. You, you don't need to really. I put even this MOU. Okay. So now you have this. They, all get into Mendeley without problem. So if you can do that with any PDF you have, it doesn't matter. It can be it can be your own traveling report just to have the test, the feeling of how you can do that. Because when we did what Mendeley did, he extracted directly the author and the publication. He completed the it's completed the field. And the field, we will show you the field now. What is compulsory when it comes to that? Okay, this is this the new one. And recently added, when I come, these are the recently added. You, you remember Bennett, I added. Cisco, I added. Cisco Keta, I added twice again. You have seen it. So we come to this. I just say, okay, everything is fine. And I click on this now. Oh, Bennett. Okay, Bennett, you you have this article, and I go for the information now. This is the general information. I said this is a report. It is not a report. It is a journal article. So sometimes, if Mendeley make a mistake like this, you always can correct it, and then you can come down. You can see. You can, that's where you can add a tag. If you want to, you add a tag. Uh, this is not the way to add a tag, but I just, uh, Amarachi, yes. And uh, then you can add another tag, tag one. And so you do that. The file is here for yourself. You can read it. And uh, URL, if you know it, you add it. When you access it, that's very important. When you access it, because uh, sometimes editor or reviewer, it's very important to have this. If it is too, yeah, you do that. So these are the different fields you can, and you can see the identify. And uh, so that's give you, and you can read that paper. Let's look at how do we read that paper. Can you see now? I open it. And the paper is here. It is in French, but you can now, because most of you probably speak English, but you can always add something on this. You can highlight it if you want, 
and I put to highlight, for example, I put a highlight on this. I can put comment on this. Yeah, comment. Very useful for my, oh. Yeah, uh, you can do that anywhere where you find uh, an article useful. Yeah, you can add a comment. Very useful for my thesis, for my assignment or for my, my, my report. You do that and that's it. But you can delete this, don't worry. You just come here, you delete them if you want to put in trash, okay? Or you just come to this. That's what I had a few minutes ago. I'm not interested. I delete it. I'm not interested. I delete it. I'm not interested. I delete it. I, I, this is the notebook where you can really write your uh, you write your note here, and that's very important because that you can take this one. When you open that, you will just concentrate on your notebook because that sentence, for example, you take one sentence, you put them in your paper and you cite it. Yeah. Okay, that's Mendeley. Okay, so you have this feature and really it is very powerful. It, it, it's very powerful. You can annotate. It. If you like a graph as well, you just put those graphs in. It can be any language, it doesn't matter. Okay, so far, if you struggle to do that, just try to do uh, that exercise on what you have, and uh, because that may help. And you can zoom out, and uh, here are the zoom out, and you can zoom in as well. You can turn, the, you can download. These are the information you will always have. Okay, so. It gives you some, and that's a, a, an indicator as well. You just uh, do use any of these features. You can move on the page and quickly. Oh, I like this. Yes. And uh, so if you like this graph, you make note here. Okay, I'm going to take this and put in my presentation. And this will help you and just to, to keep uh, your memory when you come to the, to the note. That's Mendeley. Now, one of the magic feature of Mendeley is how do we now, we found this article, how do we cite them? Because the people are more interested in that as well. And so you have all this paper, that's the, my entire references are here. You, you can see them here. Now, the recently add are, uh, are here, but what about what I read recently? These are here. You just see, I read this one. Mendeley give you that opportunity. Now you can classify favorite. What are your favorites? And you can have, these are the default which come. Your publication, publication you contribute in one way or another way. And I, so you can put them here and uh, you have the insulted and all this, I haven't sorted them. Uh, then you can see why, because 2017, and then you come from here, 2020, you know this is not sorted. Then you click here, then you go. Ah, uh, I have some duplicates, but be careful because memorandum, I put that one, it did not come as a duplicate. Why? If you type in the chart, you got a 20 pound, $20 question, why memorandum will not come uh, as a duplicate. That's the test for all of you. Doesn't matter, uh, no, except the facilitator. And trash is here. These are what I deleted recently. You can see them here, trash. And because they went to the beam. I don't want to restore them. No, let's get rid of them. Then you get rid of them permanently. Okay, so far so good, okay. Now let's come to the, uh, this, to the reference duplicate. I remove this and uh, it is good to remove this. Now it's synchronized. Wow, well done. Nothing to resolve here. There are no duplicate with the same. Uh, I shouldn't give you this because that's the, the answer of the question I ask you. Uh, I, I, I hope no one put it uh, in the chat box. The direct object, uh, uh, indicate uh, identify which is uh, that's very important I, I will show you 
Why? And here is memorandum here. You can see this. This, I pull out this memorandum, I put it because it doesn't have direct. So even if you put it, you will not have a duplicate because it doesn't have uh, it, it, it doesn't have uh, the, the the indicator, the online number. And that's the purpose. That's the uh, the uh, why it, it didn't. Now, I will show you another uh, example where you need to be very careful. And you have seen in Dr. Boland presentation, great literature and online, what, what was published already, but even online, you need to be very careful because the reason for that is here is a paper we published and the first one, 2021, second, 20. You see the difference between this. It is, the title is exactly the same, but the source is different. Plus one, then here is the bio archive. And I click on it. And uh, let's see, what did I say here about this paper? Okay. What information I have here? And, okay. Here is the preprint before uh, it's been published. That's for peer review. For example, something you want to publish, you might be, you might, you might be able, some journal will ask you, post it online, and but it's not the final result because it needs to be corrected. Or maybe that's where you need to be very careful when you pick up this. Don't think it is two different paper. It's the same. One is just preprint, and the other one is the final version of the paper. So if you want to write your thesis, and now you put this one in, then you will run into trouble because the do is different, that's fine, but the, uh, the, the correct person who will supervise you or correct your thesis examine, uh, or examine, he might say, no, uh, some results were rejected here. So it's just kind of a frustration, otherwise uh, to pay attention to data. That's the difference. So uh, it is something I wanted just to share. Okay. Now, okay. So, any other, Professor Joseph? You want to know? Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I think uh, for time, because uh, some colleagues are beginning to drop out. Maybe oh, we can okay. just, uh, yeah. we can just uh, stop here. Okay. Uh, so I I want to thank you for the very elaborate and um, exhaustive presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tiable. Um, they, there are questions, but I see that. Uh, Sam has answered most of the questions, but some of the questions came direct to me. They were not, put, it was not put on the chat. And they, they have to do with uh, Pascal. And that is where I want to uh, get Pascal to you know show himself. Some of the colleagues are asking who is uh, the chief librarian for the organization. Uh, so it is Pascal, uh, my colleague, Pascal Muelo. Um, I want him to quickly talk on uh, what is available in um, in the in the regional office in the library, particularly with access to some of these uh, uh, softwares or materials? We have the gift, we have the Hinari, which has uh, which Sam has talked about. But they also I, they also asking whether we have access to um, EndNote or something like that. So if we can just get Pascal to talk very briefly, please. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, so if you stop, if you stop projecting, so that we can see Pascal uh, well. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. I'm very happy to attend this uh, webinar with um, very good, very good presentations. Um, I'm very impressed. Um, yes, I, I, I'm, I've been trying to um, answer to some question. I think I've answered to the question related to uh, EndNote. Uh, we, I see that we have no license, you know, for EndNote, unfortunately. Uh, in Afro, we use uh, Zotero, which is a free uh, I2. So we don't have access to uh, to EndNote, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I was very happy to see what uh, uh, Sam has displayed uh, on 
uh, inari and uh, on uh, uh, gift. I I've been responded to some colleagues because I received a message from uh, Senegal. So I, I replied and I sent uh, the uh, credentials because in the country office, if they want to use uh, Research for Life or Inari, they have to uh, to get uh, uh, the credentials. As uh, Sam said, uh, just send us a message. Uh, we will provide you with all the credentials for the country offices. Uh, so apart from uh, Research for Life and GIFT, we have also the African Next Medicus, which is uh, a database that we prepared here in Afro, because if you see most of these uh, publications, they are from the North, they are from uh, the major publishers. But in Africa also, we have some journals uh, that we gather uh, uh, through uh, the African Index Medicus. So uh, please use the same email address uh, to get details on these uh, platforms. Uh, this is what, what I want to say, Joseph. And, uh, back yeah. To Okay, thank you very much, Pascal. I want, I want to emphasize uh, from what Pascal said now is that if you need assistance, which is most likely, you should just write to them. Uh, if you are WHO staff, you can already know how to reach Pascal, muelop at who.int. And I tell you, I assure you, they are very, very responsive. They answer very fast, Pascal and his colleagues. There was a time we wanted to do something on the uh, yellow fever, and the colleagues were asking, how do they get literature? I just I, I just wrote to Pascal's team. And before you know it, they flooded the colleagues with literature publications on uh, yellow fever. So uh, that is one thing I want to emphasize from what he said, uh, that if you write to them, you can get their response. And I assure you, they do respond very promptly. Thank you. Uh, Joseph, I'd like to add that we, we uh, disseminate also uh, a digest. So if there are colleague, colleagues who are not part of this digest, please let us have the email address so that we can uh, include them in the digest that we disseminate uh, twice uh, a, week. Uh, a week. Yes, yes. yes. So yeah, that's true. So there's that uh, uh, dissemination of uh, publications they do twice a week. Um, if you are not receiving it, please let us know. So we'll submit your contact to, to the library so that you get publications as they come out. Thank you very much, Pascal. Then, uh, uh, there's a question. Mendeley increases the percentage of similarity of written work. How can you deal with this issue? Tiable, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, it, it it increases the the chances of uh, maybe having making papers to look like one is plagiarizing the other. How can <laughs> you deal with this issue? Well, yeah, that's why it is good. Uh, you know, a uh, machine or technology cannot uh, replace human brain. It is just impossible. You have to master your subject your area, and you have to read it through. And uh, for example, if you look at some of these application now, it's not only Mendeley, and uh, you, you can put it in uh, any AI, artificial intelligence platform, they, you will see uh, the number of word, for example, which if it comes to plagiarism uh, part, similarity, and uh, you will see how this is uh, done. And what will happen is it will take the key words. If you have more than some percentage, of course, it will say, yes, that look like similar. But in reality, uh, no. You have to work on it. You have to work through this article and look at it, whether they are very similar or not. If that's the purpose, maybe the author can be more specific on this question. Yeah, because it's yeah. Similar to, uh, for example, you just saw two articles, the same article, because the do I number is different, and then it will show like different. But uh, so in fact, it is not uh, different by title, but it's different by do I. So I don't think Mendeley will give the same uh, do I to the uh, to, to to article no uh, no no that that I have not come across 
uh, that part of the similarity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank maybe you maybe you can yeah. write this question to Professor Joseph, and okay. uh, we uh, we can dig into it properly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. There's also a question. If you look into the chat, it's in French. Unfortunately, I, my French is uh, is uh, very advanced, so I'm not able to. Yeah, uh, I, will, I will read it. Okay, yeah, please that's, go. Uh, my colleague Zo Ariana Patricia, yes. Uh, yes. she gave the question. Nous aimerions avoir les détails sur uh, les méthodes. On n'a pas pu suivre. Est-ce que possible? Yes. Uh, she asked if we can have uh, the data of the methodology, but now, do you, uh, Patricia, maybe it is the methodology related to the literature search or the methodology uh, related to the use of reference manager? Uh, Patricia, si vous pouvez taper encore methodology, méthode en relation avec uh, la recherche de littérature ou bien c'est avec euh, la gestion des, des informations dans les bases de données. Et ça, ça va nous aider. OK? Over, otherwise, yes. For example, when you take the end note, because of the time, otherwise you will see the magic of end note as well and how it okay. is going to help you. Yeah. OK. Thank you. OK. So she, oh, she also... Over wrote, to, she, uh, she wrote, uh, Samuel. Thank you. Dr. Samuel. She, Yes, she, she also wrote it in English. He said, can we have details of literature review methods? I, <laughs> I don't want to begin to, because we, we've had the literature review. This is the second time we are talking on literature review. And uh, we were supposed to be talking of uh, res, uh, methods this week, but we decided to repeat. To, so um, you will get the slides for this presentation. I think uh, Sam did a very detailed job on the methods of literature review. Uh, so if you combine what he presented today and what he presented uh, uh, the last time we met, I think that was in December, you know, you get you know, more than enough on the methods of literature review. Um, the slides said, will be circulated tomorrow. Yes. He said, please remind me the platform you referred to earlier on for publication in the region. Um, I believe this question Pascal? is related to uh, to Henari and yeah, also Pascal, uh, to Gift. So over to Pascal. Pascal, please. You are, you are muted, please. You are muted. Okay. So, sorry, sorry, colleagues. I was trying to respond to uh, by email to a colleague from country office. So, okay. Uh, what was the question again, please? He said, please remind me the platform you referred to earlier for publications in the region. Oh, okay. The African Index Medicus. Maybe, yes. uh, may I, Africa, I can maybe put the link in the chat. Okay. Please, if you can, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that would that. be great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, colleague says, Robert, I don't understand. He said the question above quest the the question above refers to citing references using Mendeley. I don't know which question now. I'm sorry. Uh, um, Robert's first question was the one about Mendeley. In Increasing the percentage of similarity of written work. Okay. Uh, but we still don't understand your question. If you could yeah. raise it's still not very clear. If I'm you sorry. Could... You can write to us, um, say, write to us directly, then uh, maybe we can interact. Or you can call us as a matter of fact. We're all WHO staff. We're on a GPN. So we can deal with that better. Okay. Uh Colleagues, thank you very much for your participation in this session. I want to thank the facilitators, uh, Sam and uh, Sam uh, Tiable and Pascal for their you know, contribution and their support to this exercise. Uh, yes, Pascal has put the link in the chat so you can look at it there. Uh, we'll continue with uh, this exercise uh, next month. Uh, Amarachi, am I correct? Is it next month or later this month? Um, next month. Next month. 
So okay. next month we're having our colleagues from um, from uh, where is the, eh? later this month on the twenty eighth. I had 28, that's why I said next month. Or two. So on the 28th, we are having our colleagues from, uh, what do we call that place? From uh, the, the, the WHO. Center of Excellence in Germany, actually. Yeah. You know, to come and take us on uh, the methods. But of course, these facilitators you have here, uh, Pascal, Keble, and uh, Sam will also be available to uh, give support and answer questions that come up. Um, we have we have identified some mentors. Some colleagues have uh, gladly accepted to mentor you if you want to write your papers. And I want to use this opportunity to emphasize that the papers we are not asking you to mount fresh research. It is to use your ongoing work or the data that you already have around you and see how we can develop a manuscript for publication out of that. So we are not. Um, asking you to start a totally fresh research, because that means you will not be able to publish this year. You will be probably will be thinking of next year or next two years. So let's uh, focus on the data that we have around us or whatever work we are currently doing. So submit your topic and maybe your short abstract, and that will help us to identify the mentor that will work with you. So we are, the, the management had written to some people that have been identified and they have gladly accepted to support this process. Um, uh, if we have other questions, how about using secondary data? Yes, that's what we are saying now, secondary data. You, the data that you have already, you've collected for other things, you can use it to uh, publish a paper. So that is what we are saying. So we don't want you to go and um, mount a study for you know, collecting primary data. Otherwise, you won't be able to publish. Yes, of course, you can use DHS. DH, DHS, I think. I don't know about DHH. But if there's anything like DHH, you can also use it. But I know DHS. Um, so thank you, colleagues. Thanks for your participation. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the, 23rd of, on the 28th of February when we shall be talking about uh, uh, the method, the method section of your scientific paper. Thanks again to the facilitators, uh, Sam, Jeble, and uh, Pascal. See you on the 28th. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Bernard. Yeah. Bye.